Hi everyone, I'm Christine from Readerly Musings and today I am making an update video for the Bout of Books 10.0 Readathon. Today is the halfway point and so I thought I would talk about the books I've read thus far so that I don't have an incredibly long video when I post my wrap up vlog because I've already read four books and I'm a quarter of the way through my fifth book so let's get started. The first book that I read and finished on day one is American Savage by Matt Wyman. I absolutely love this book. I don't often read books with a lot of dark humor um, and I don't really know why because I, I do really enjoy it and I love this book. I gave it five stars on Goodreads really if I could have given it more <laughs> I would have and it was just so wonderful the way that Matt wrote it so that you sort of knew what the fate of the family was um, because he talks about private investigator and what it's like when the news comes out about them so you sort of know what's gonna happen to the savages but you don't really know and and I love that I, I love that you know sort of what's gonna happen and sort of not and even when you're reading it everything is still such a surprise for the characters I loved each and every one of them I loved Ivan with his misguided humor <laughs> um, and I really I, I do blame the parents for that I say you know you really need to sit down and say what is a joke and what is terrorizing people <laughs> explain that to him please I also love Sasha and I loved how even though her family is made up of cannibals and she herself is one she decides to become a vegetarian for a month at the persuasion of her boyfriend and I thought that was really interesting how she wanted to sort of spread her wings a little bit and exploring herself I really liked that about her character and I liked how she was so worried about what her father was gonna say especially and the way that Angelica her mom helped her uh, keep it a secret from him I, I liked that she was willing to go that extra mile for her daughter. I also really loved Angelica and how she used shopping as a form of therapy because of the fact that her family eats humans occasionally because she didn't grow up being a cannibal. She was brought into it by her husband Titus um, when they got married and so it wasn't like Titus where he grew up uh, eating human flesh and thinking that it's not necessarily a normal thing but that he's okay with it and he likes it and he enjoys it. Um, I also really really love the backstory as to how the Savage family became cannibals and I'm not going to talk about it because I think everyone should experience that for themselves that back that wonderful backstory because it really really showed that it's not just an ur it wasn't just an urge to one day eat human flesh and that there were still some moral implications and even the fact that they don't eat human flesh all the time shows that they do have morals and even though that they do do this strange and um, disgusting thing and immoral thing they do still have morals they're not completely terrible people and I really like that. I love the side characters. I love Sasha's boyfriend, how he's trying to get her to become vegetarian and then he's like, you know, I'm going to become a vegan now. Maybe you should become a vegan and just trying to get her away from me. And, and I, I love that. I loved how it's a different form of peer pressure than you usually see like with drugs or sex and and I love that. I. And I feel like I'm saying I love a lot, but I really, really did. I love this book so, so, so much. Which is why I was so thankful when just two hours after I finished reading this book, like immediately after the Twitter chat on Monday ended, I received in the mail American Savage from the UK. I ordered this only two weeks ago. I thought it was going to take a lot longer than that to get here. But I ordered it from the book depository and they tend to be really, really fast with international shipping. Other things are not always that fast when it comes to international shipping. 
And so I was really, really pleased to get this. I don't know when it's coming out in the U.S. because, And this actually just came out a couple of weeks ago in the U.K. So I'm thinking it's going to be another year until the hardcover comes out. And I will be buying that too because I want matching editions. Make it happen! <laughs> um, I won't go into the background on this story because um, it would spoil a lot of the first book. But uh, as you can guess from the title, they're in America! The savages are in America! And I love that. I, I love that they relocated to America. I love also that it jumped three years into the future, so they are so much different than where they were at the end of The Savages, and you're getting used to them as these new characters, even though they're still the same old characters. I finished this book on day two after reading about half of it on day one. Um, I had some other things going on, so I couldn't finish on day one. I feel like I could have, because that's how engrossed in these books I was. And just absolutely amazing. I gave this one five stars as well. And I'm really hoping that there's going to be at least a third book, because I've got a lot of questions left about what happens to these characters. So please, Matt Wyman. Um, so, so please, Matt Wyman, Hot Key Books, third book. After I finished American Savage on day two, I picked up my third book, Ingrid by Lynette Craft. I got about 70 pages into this book before putting it down. And it was not because it was good, because this book was excellent, and I will explain why in a moment, but because when I was making my TBR, I did not put into account what books were coming out this week. And by not putting into those books into account, I forgot that there was one book coming out this week that I had pre-ordered and that I knew I needed to read right away. And that book is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. There has been so much secrecy surrounding this book and so many vague reviews and blurbs out there in the past few months that I knew I needed to read this right away before someone spoiled it for me. So since I pre-ordered it, as soon as I was able to, after doing er running errands with my parents and after my writing group Tuesday night, I went, I picked up this book, I opened it, I started reading it, the only time I put it down was at 11.59 p.m. so that I could mark the location that I reached on day two, quickly post my day two update on my blog that I had been writing and adding to throughout the day, quick post of that, and then picked up from where I left off. And I finished this at probably about 12.30 or 12.40 on day three of the readathon. And I cannot tell you how much I love this book. It was just incredible. I know some people will not like it because of the writing style. It's because it is sort of disjointed and you can even tell that from the back of the book here. It says, we are Sinclairs. No one is needy. No one is wrong. We live, at least in the summertime, on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Perhaps that is all you need to know except that some of us are liars. So the sentences are really short, quick to the point. It's a very fast read, but not everyone's gonna like those short sentences. But I, I did, I loved it, I, I loved it. And I loved the characters, not gonna. <laughs> and I really, really cannot say anything else about this book right now because I am so afraid of spoiling it for anyone. But I would like to say that if you do you want to read this book, if you're planning on reading this book, go pick it up and read it as soon as you possibly can. Because I know people are going to be talking about the ending, they're going to be spoiling it, and this is one of those books you do not want to be spoiled for. Because I honestly did not see the ending coming, but when I finished it, I, I could, I totally saw it. I, I, and I didn't understand how I missed it, but I did. And it was just 
amazing. It really, really was. And this was actually my first E. Lockhart book, even though I do have a few of her others already. I just have not read them yet, but this one was amazing, and I'm really looking forward to reading some of her other works. Again, pick this up as soon as you possibly can. I cannot stress that enough. Okay. <laughs> yes, just pick it up right now. Go. Do not look on the internet. Do not collect $200. Just go. <laughs> Yes, Monopoly humor, people. <laughs> okay, so those are all the books I... Oh, whoops. So, on... And after I finished this book, I could not pick up anything else. I literally could not. I was... I just was laying there in my bed like, Oh my god, what did I just read? And I was going, Okay, I need to pick up another book. And I was like, Ingrid? No, I can't pick that up. Okay, what other books could I possibly read? And I was just going through this list of books that have been on my TBR for, not even just for the readathon, but just my TBR in general. And I was like, no, no, no. And so I literally did not pick up another book that night. I just, I went to sleep, and I woke up in the morning, and I went to work, and I was still thinking about this book. It was that incredible of a read for me. So after I got home from work uh, yesterday, day three, I actually had to eat lunch real quick because I had a doctor's appointment. And ev everything's fine. It was just a normal checkup. Everything's okay and everything's fine. But I had to wait in the waiting room for I don't even know how long for the doctor to um, call me in because I got there 15 minutes early like they asked. And of course, I didn't get called in, I think, until at least 20 minutes after my appointment time. So I was there for at least 35 minutes in the waiting room doing nothing, except reading Ingrid by Lynette Kraft. And I got about another 70 pages of this read. And I loved it. And I, w I it's, I don't even know how to explain it right now. Um, but I had the music as well playing as well so I could fully immerse myself and the music is just a wonderful wonderful accompaniment to it and the illustrations oh man they're so pretty um and then after the doctor I came home did stuff basically a lot of stuff except for reading and then finally after dinner I picked this up again and I finished it and oh my gosh this needs to be picked up by a publisher I cannot say that enough because as I said in my um, TBR video this book was privately printed by the author and her family to get it out to publishers and literary agents and the backers of their Kickstarter who still wanted a copy and it's absolutely incredible it needs to be picked up um, if you can go to the website www.ingridbook.com and they have the first 10 chapters the entire soundtrack and thumbnails of all the artwork up for anyone to look at and seriously go do that and spread the word let publishers know that this book needs to be available to the public this book is a light fantasy following a girl named Ingrid who was born mute and she lives in a small village called Scott and she only has one friend named Adair and she's very cut off from the world in a sense. She can't talk. She has to write what she wants to say. And she's very uncomfortable around people because, you know, they're all so loud and they can talk and they can express themselves so well. And she has to, and she feels so left out and alone in the world. And then the fantasy element comes in when there are the two beings that come to Scott and they tell Ingrid that she has an important job to do and this job it helps her to understand that being mute is not the worst thing in the world and these two people without spoiling too much they help her realize that being mute should not keep her from living her life and it's just it's a wonderful 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 uh, example for everyone who feels like there's something in their way from living their life from um, 
from being a part of the world and making friends and it's just I really cannot praise this enough really I can't I just I can't so everyone please go visit www.ingridbook.com and check this out after I finished Ingrid I participated in the bout of books chat last night for an hour and oh my gosh it was so much fun it was better than the Monday morning one because I didn't feel like it was as insane with the number of tweets that were coming in, coming in, coming in and dropping them further down where I couldn't really keep up with it on Monday. And though there were some that I couldn't keep up with last night, I could keep up with a lot more than I did on Monday. And it was amazing getting to hear everyone's answers to the different questions that were posted and new people that I follow on now following on Twitter and that I'm going to be following their blogs or their YouTube videos so I'm really happy with that uh, I did not pick up another book for the rest of day three however because I spent the next hour watching booktube videos and just unwinding because that <laughs> book that that chat just had me so hyped up and so like on t feeling so on top of the world that I really could not just sit and read a book. It made me want to continue to be part of the book community and watching some videos on booktube really helped me keep that feeling for a while longer. However, once midnight came around, I did pick up my first book for day four. This book was not on my TBR either, but I really felt like I needed a fantasy book. And my dad is still not halfway through Tahar and Wanderer. He's probably only about a quarter of the way through. And so I could not pick that one up. And I decided to pick up one of the books that I just hauled in my book outlet unboxing video. And that is Touching the Surface by Kimberly Sabatini. I made sure that I picked up a standalone book because I was like, no series, no series, because then I would just add the next installment to my TBR and I didn't want that happening. So I'm about a quarter of the way through now and it is both of what I expected and also not what I expected. Um, it's just, I don't even know how to explain it in a way that would fully explain. Um, it, like I said in my unboxing video, it's about a girl who dies for the third time and her soul goes to this sort of purgatory place it's not, and, and she has to figure out what's gone on in her lives, all three of them, that she needs to change so that her soul can finally, finally move on instead of coming to this halfway place. And just the different characters that are in this, I'm really liking it. I love the world they're able to create things with their thoughts and also everyone is able to know how they're feeling because this sort of symbol appears like she says how two characters are the main character Elliot says how two other characters are fighting and so there are storm clouds and then there's this other one who's reading and she's happy and there's a rainbow and I really, I love that, how the world is like that where no one can hide how they're feeling from anyone else. It's just your soul is out there for all to see. No hiding your feelings, no hiding your thoughts. And I, I love that. Um, I'm not really going to say anything else because, like I said, I'm only a quarter of the way through. But I also don't want to spoil anything for anyone because when Ellie arrives at the halfway point, she cannot remember any of her third life so there's a lot of figuring it out with her and so if I say anything about her past life or any of the other characters I feel like I'm going to be giving a lot away but I'm really enjoying this so far I'm hoping to finish it today after I finish filming my videos um I'm not sure if I will or not but I'm hopeful. So those are all the books I've read and started reading so far and I still have a few books on my TBR so even though I did add some books you know 
we're good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I've got plenty to do. Um, as you may have noticed, however, Anne of Avonlea is missing from this pile of books so far. And that is because I did read it over the weekend before the readathon started. So that one was crossed off my list. We Were Liars was put in its place and then I added um, touching the surface for no reason whatsoever really. However, I still am planning on reading Anne of the Island because I need to find out what else happens to Anne Shirley and all her friends in Avonlea. I need to find out. I really, really need to find out. So this is going to be the next book I pick up once I finish touching the surface. And that's really all I have to say about the readathon so far. I'm having lots of fun as you can see. I'm talking with a lot of people on Twitter. I'm trying to read everyone's update. Well, not everyone's. I mean, there's over a thousand people participating. But I'm trying to look at a lot of the participants' uh, updates and see how they're doing, what they're reading, how many pages they finished. Uh, oh, yes. You're probably wondering how many pages I've read so far since I finished four books and I'm on my fifth. I have read over a thousand pages so far and it really makes me want to try and keep track um, when I'm not doing readathons how many pages I read in a week in addition to just how many books I read. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do that but I am thinking about that. Um, so that's it. I hope everyone else who is participating in the bout of books is remembering the key part of this readathon which is to have fun and that there is no failing only flailing as the two hosts have said multiple 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 times and if any of you have any video updates for the readathon feel free to leave a comment below on and link me to your video or even link me to your blog whichever is fine i'm totally fine with watching videos, reading blogs, um, even if you just have a little tweet update, feel free to link to your tweet and, and let me know how you're doing. My next vlog should be up soon. I'm actually going to go film it now. So, yeah. <laughs> so you'll get see me wearing this shirt in a second video. Okay, until then, bye!